Hi, we're looking at co-dominance. It's 17.5 in A2 in the AQA specification. What do we mean by co-dominance? Well, we're talking about when one allele is equally dominant to the other. And we're gonna start off with an example first of all, where we're just looking at two alleles, and then what we'll do is we'll move into three alleles. So back in GCSE, we always followed the etiquette or the symbols where we had a uppercase letter to denote something that was dominant and a lowercase letter that was to represent something that was recessive. In other words, masked by the dominant allele. So we want to maintain that terminology, that etiquette. The example we're looking at is in the colour of petals. And what actually happens is that there is an inactive pigment. And if you have the allele to code for this particular enzyme, then the inactive pigment is changed to an active pigment okay and the active pigment is red so our allele actually codes for an enzyme so for the enzyme we're going to use the code R so we're coding for the color of petals so I'm going to do a C and an R so that's to have the enzyme and equally without the enzyme we're going to use a W Okay, so here we can actually see that if you had this genotype on both chromosomes, you have the allele for the enzyme. You're producing a lot of enzyme to turn the inactive pigment into the active pigment, so your flower will be red. If we look at the um, genotype over here, where you don't have the enzyme, you don't have the allele for the enzyme, and you don't have the allele for the enzyme, then guess what? You cannot turn that inactive pigment into an active pigment and your flower will look white. However, and this is where the co-dominance comes in, if one of our chromosomes has the allele to make the protein and the other one doesn't, we've got some of the enzyme. And so therefore, we get the pink flower. In other words, both of these are expressed because it's pink. We can't say that the red is dominant to the white because that would make, mean that the white was recessive and remember, recessive is when it's masked by the dominant. But this allele is not masked by this other allele here. So it's not recessive, it's co-dominant. It actually shows in the phenotype. Let's have a look at what happens when we cross a red flowered plant with the white flowered plant. In other words, when it has the enzyme and when it doesn't have the enzyme. So what we get is the phenotype of the one flower would be red and the phenotype of the other flower would be white. The genotypes, um, for it to be red, it must have both alleles and for it to be white, it must have both alleles. So very simply, the only, remember when we put this into a Punnett square, we have to circle these to show that these are actually the gametes. And very simply, we can see that the only gamete this plant can make is big C little r, um, and the same there, and the only gamete this plant can make is big C uh, little w. And when we cross those, all of the F1 offspring are going to be exactly the same. They are gonna be pink because both the enzyme will be expressed and the effect of no enzyme will be expressed. So all the F1 generation are going to be pink. If we now cross the F1 generation, the F1 generation were both heterozygous. They had the allele for the enzyme and they had the allele for no enzyme. And so they were able to make two gametes. This was the one gamete and this was the other gamete from this plant and the same on the other side. So we're putting them in circles because that's what the specification requires to show that you know that they are discrete entities, they are gametes. And of course, when these come together, what we've got is a pink here times a pink over here. And when we actually look at what is produced, this one here has the allele for the enzyme and the allele for the enzyme. A lot of enzyme is going to be produced. 
we're going to get very red flowers. Here, we've got the allyl for the enzyme, but we've also got the effect of no enzyme. So some enzyme is produced, so some of the pigment is changed. We get a pink flower. Here is the same, and here we've got no enzyme, no enzyme, so the inactive pigment doesn't change to the red pigment. So I would say I have got one red, I've got two pink, and I've got one white. In other words, 25% chance, because remember it's random and it might not actually happen like that. 50% chance of pink and 25% uh, chance of a white flower. We're now looking at another example, and this is where we look at multiple alleles. Now, we all know about blood groups because we did it at GCSE, right? You can be blood group A, you can be blood group B, or you can be blood group O. And if you're blood group A, then basically uh, you have the antigen on your red blood cell surface uh, denoted by antigen A. But we stick it superscript on a letter I. Why? Because it's co-dominant. It's co-dominant with antigen B. Okay? Both of those are dominant to blood group with no immunoglobulin. Let's have a little look at that. If you were blood group A, you could be of um, genotype IA, IA, or you could be I, A, I, O. If you're blood group B, you could be blood group with IB, 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 or IO. If you're blood group O, you have to be IO and IO. Why? Because if you had A there, it would dominate. If you had B there, it would be dominant to the other. So equally dominant, recessive to both. So it's a bit of an unusual example. And here are the various combinations we could have. Blood group A, blood group AB, blood group A, blood group B, blood group AB, blood group B, and blood group O. Let's look at a question. And this is one I gave to my students actually earlier today. It was five marks and actually one of my higher end students only managed to gain two. And it's actually really, really simple stuff, but let's have a little look at what he wrote and what the questions were. About blood groups, and here we have a hereditary chart where we're following the different parents and the children that they had. And of course, we have to work backwards. That's what it's all about. So if we look here at person 13, they are blood group O, so we know they must have been IO, I O, and when we go back, we know that if that was person A, they must have been A O, and this person must have been B O, for them both to have given an allele each of I O, which meant that this person was I O. Hope that makes sense. Okay, let's have a look at the questions that go with this. The first question says, how many antigen determining alleles will be present in a white blood cell? Give a reason for your answer. You've got to do two things. You've got to give a number and you've got to give a reason. In any of our cells, our chromosomes come in pairs and whatever it is they're coded for, an enzyme or an antigen on the surface of a cell, there are two codes, there are two alleles. So for the gene for the antigen, you've got two. Why? Because our cells are diploid. So that is actually the answer. We've got diploid cells and that's why you would have two codes for the antigen. However, this student has actually changed their answer when we went through it in class. At the beginning, he had written two, which is correct, as there are two co-dominant phenotypes. But that's not the right answer. That's it's just explaining about co-dominance. This, this question is broader than co-dominance. It's about how many alleles do we have to code for an antigen? And of course it's two because we're diploid. Let's look at the next question. Which antigen or antigens will be present on the plasma membranes of red blood cells of individual five. Well, and individual five actually has blood group AB. It tells us that in the question. And so basically the antigens will be A and the, the other antigen will be B. That is correct. Now, according to the examiner's report, which you really should be reading alongside the mark scheme, it actually said that a lot of students lost that mark because they had written 
I A I B. Well, that is obviously the alleles, and the question asks which are the antigens, so it needs to be that. Now, this next question was really quite good because it said if individual six and seven were to have another child, what is the probability the child would be male and blood group A? Explain your answer. Again, it's asking for two things. It's asking for a probability and an explanation. And we're looking at individual six and we're looking at individual seven. Now, there were three marks for this. And what the student has done is he's drawn a little Punnett square over here and he's worked it out. He said, okay, we know that this person is AO and BO for the alleles because of the offspring here. So he's quickly done what should be the gametes, but he's not circled them. And he's quickly done a genetic cross. And from that, only this one would be blood group A because it's AO. So he said, okay, that's great. That's 25% or one in four. Well, in actual fact, that's wrong because the question asked for a male and blood group A. So the chance of a male being born is 50-50. So what we need to do is then multiply those probabilities together and the actual chance is one in eight. So as you can see, he lost that mark because he wrote 25% chance as six is heterozygous AO and seven is heterozygous BO. He then went on to say, ah, but that's okay. I'll get the other, one of the other marks because I drew a genetic diagram. Well, let's have a little look. Did he draw a genetic diagram? Certainly there's no marks. For that bit there. In the mark scheme it says accept second and third points from a suitable genetic diagram. Is this a suitable genetic diagram? I don't think so. He hasn't circled his gametes, he hasn't said uh, what the phenotypes are, he hasn't said what the genotypes are and he hasn't said anything about the gametes. So there's very little information that we can get from his genetic cross. Although in actual fact, we know what exactly what he was thinking and what he was working out there. So where were the three marks? Well, there was a mark for saying there was a one in eight chance, i.e. a quarter times a half. Also a mark for saying there was a 25% chance of the offspring being blood group A. So there was a mark for that. And there was a mark for the explanation saying that half will be male. So even if you had done the calculation, you might have got those marks. So that is co-dominance. And the main thing I want you to walk away with is the idea. When you get an exam question, as soon as you see those little superscript letters, you know you're looking at a co-dominance question. Co-dominance is mono-hybrid. And although we have got examples where co-dominance is just two alleles, like the colours for the petals in the flower. We also have examples that are more complicated like blood group that show that you've got co-dominance alongside recessive as well.